Okay, so we're going to discuss the region of convergence of the Laplace transform. And we'll start by looking at the Laplace transform and thinking about its relationship to the Fourier transform. So remember that S equals sigma plus j omega. And so let's put that into the equation here and see that we get an integral for the formula of the Laplace transform that equals xt e to the minus sigma t times e to the minus j omega t dt, just simply by substituting in for s. And then if we put brackets around here, we can see that this element here is uh, part of, is, if, we, if this is the function, this is inside a Fourier transform. So the Laplace transform of xt is the same as the Fourier transform equals the Fourier transform of xt times e to the minus sigma t. Okay, so that's what the Laplace transform is. It's actually the Fourier transform of a version or a multiplied or you could say weighted version of the signal. And let's think about what this weighting is and what this sigma t is here. Okay, so this leads us to uh, the two dimensions to be thinking about uh, a region. And I'll say, explain what that means. So the Fourier transform of this function here, let's see this, uh, we've got a complex number which has two components, sigma and omega. Uh, and so we draw that axis of sigma and omega. Now if sigma equals zero, then we actually just have the Fourier transform of xt. So where is sigma equal to zero on this plot? Sigma is this axis, so sigma equals zero is here. So along this axis is the Fourier transform of the signal on this axis. So the Laplace transform is a generalization and it includes the Fourier transform. Okay, so for example, we think about some waveforms. So if we had, for example, uh, in the time domain, if we had a cos wave form uh, in the time domain, if this was our xt, then the Fourier transform exists in this plane. It exists along this axis here. So we know that the Fourier transform of a cos wave form is two delta functions, uh, one at omega 1, if the cos wave form, if this is cos omega 1t, if that's the time domain function, then in the frequency domain it's two delta functions, one at omega 1 and the other at minus omega 1. This is x j omega. Uh, so on this plane here, this is this axis along here is this axis along here. This is plus infinity, this is minus infinity. So there will be a delta function here at omega 1 and another delta function at minus omega 1. So we take this function here and represent it on the uh, 90 degree rotation. This is where that function is and you can imagine out of the page are two delta functions. It's just this function flipped on the side, uh, flipped up on the side and rotated around. That's that axis there. And this would be two delta functions. This would be the representation of cos omega t, omega 1 t, in this Laplace plane of sigma and j omega. Okay, so what about some other functions? We now know the Fourier transform of the signal itself is, is represented here. So what about all these other, these other regions of this two-dimensional plane? Well, let's think of another signal, for example. Uh, and maybe it's a signal where there's nothing in time and maybe it's like a recording of my voice where you switch the microphone on and it starts recording my voice. And let's say my voice went into a feedback system, maybe like at a, when you put the microphone too close to the speaker and you get that really shrill feedback. And so the signal might be increasing. That would be increasing through positive feedback. Well, this signal, because it's increasing, uh, this signal will have, if it goes on and on forever, this signal will have infinite energy and therefore it does not have a Fourier transform. We can't represent it by summations of cos waveforms. 
And this is where the Laplace transform comes in. So in this case, we could, and so what that means is this waveform does not have a Fourier transform. So you couldn't plot anything on this axis because it's not defined. But what we could do is we could multiply it by a negative exponential, and if we multiply, which is what we're doing over here, and so if we picked a value of sigma, we could multiply this by a negative exponential, and we would get something that would look like this. So th although this, as long as the exponential was at a bigger negative rate than this one is at a positive rate, then the signal, the resultant signal of multiplying the two will get smaller over time. And that's what we're doing over here. And what does that mean? This would be for a value of sigma. Well, on our plot over here, we, that means for a particular value of sigma, maybe sigma 1 here, then we've, we're now looking at something which is the Fourier transform of the waveform which has been multiplied by this negative exponential. So that is now something that goes from in the omega axis again, but it goes along this line here. So there's a Fourier transform along this line here that goes from minus infinity to infinity. Now if we had another one, let's pick another one for example, sigma 2, which is a bigger, uh, more compressive, then this will mean that our waveform, our resultant waveform gets to zero more quickly than this one did. And this one will be at a higher value of sigma 2, and again, when we take the Fourier transform of that, this will exist here on this axis. And of course there's a continuum of them for all the different real values of sigma. So this is a continuum for all of these values. Now because I've drawn these ones where the energy goes to zero, we will have a valid Fourier transform here, we have a valid Fourier transform here, and in between we will have valid Fourier transforms. And somewhere between this one, this value of sigma and the zero, because my original one grew, as I was saying with time, somewhere between here will be the value of sigma where there is an exact uh, cancellation of the increase with the multiplication which is causing it to decrease. And that will be uh, represented where there's a division, and on the right-hand side of that, for this example, on the right-hand side of that, we will always have Fourier transforms because the uh, exponential is a greater value, so it's more, there's a greater negative value here to cancel out the effect of the growth and cause it to have finite energy. So for all these values of, of sigma, you will be able to work out the Fourier transform. And for all the values below that and more negative, you won't be able to. And so this is called the region of convergence for the Laplace transform. So it's a good way to think about Laplace transforms. Laplace transforms are Fourier transforms all next to each other, which are going from minus infinity to infinity, and each one of them is a Fourier transform of a version of the signal which has been multiplied by a, an exponential function, which if the sigma is positive, it dampens the function down. And so this is why how the generalization of the Fourier transform to the Laplace transform. And it enables us to consider signals which grow with energy, which don't have a Fourier transform, but for certain values of sigma, they do have the Laplace transform. Then you can do all the processing with Laplace transform in the transform domain of the compressed signal, uh, just as we do with Fourier transform, and then convert back uh, as, as long as you convert back with an in, a reverse multiplication uh, to get back into the time domain of a, an exponential with the same value of sigma.